History has come full circle. And a people who once drank deeply the refreshing waters of liberty and prosperity are now discovering that the wellspring is going dry and their throats are growing parched under the scorching heat of an increasingly oppressive government. Ironically, the very government established to liberate them from the oppression of the British Empire. Agents of the Crown suspended our own legislatures, incited the Indian savages to attack us, plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. On March 23, 1775, my good friend Patrick Henry delivered a remarkable oration at St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia. Lend your ears and ask yourselves just how relevant my friend's words are today. It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear? Is peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God! I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Our war for independence had begun, and a year later delegates to the Continental Congress did not hesitate to mutually pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor in support of Mr. Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, which I consider the most eloquent cry for freedom ever penned by the hand of mortal man. Inspired by Mr. Jefferson's eloquence, we hazarded our all upon that noble cause, and for five hellish years, slugged through the bloody mire of war to secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. When the Constitutional Convention announced the formation of a new government in 1787, the inestimable Dr. Franklin was asked precisely what they had given the American people. A republic, he responded, if you can keep it. If you can keep it. Well, here you are, and here I am, having been summoned by the dire nature of your circumstances and importune to offer words of counsel and encouragement. Be grateful you still have the power of the ballot, but be certain you use it wisely, as it will be the only chance you may ever have of peacefully undoing the damage that has been inflicted on your republic. When the time comes to elect leaders and representatives, choose only those candidates whose integrity commends them to the office and whose fidelity to the constitutional rule of law ensures their fidelity to the people. To this end, they must understand our constitution and the nature of our government, a representative republic governed by a constitution that precisely enumerates the powers of the central government, where the rule of law applies to everyone. They and you must embrace virtue, self-reliance, education, and unity, the four cardinal strengths that made America the exceptional nation that it is, and the greatest force for liberty and prosperity in human history. If we strive to practice the virtues of prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude, in a spirit of charity, humility, and patience, no travail or tumult can shake the foundation of our national house. Only by
by dint of self-reliance will a virtuous people flourish in liberty and prosperity. The surest way for any government to exercise total power over its citizens is to make them utterly dependent upon it for the very means of their survival. Mr. Jefferson was quite right when he said that no nation can expect to be free and ignorant in a state of civilization. A knowledgeable citizenry is critical to the longevity of a healthy republic, just as surely as an ignorant citizenry is the most powerful tool a tyrant can wield to destroy it. The epigram of the United States is E Pluribus Unum, from many, one. It describes not merely the confederation of 13 colonies united in the cause of liberty and independence, but America itself, a vast melting pot where the living metal of every nation, race, and creed on the planet is refined and amalgamated into a distinctively American alloy of exceptional strength and remarkable durability. In our day, there was the quill pen and the printing press, while you, on the other hand, have the power of electricity, and it facilitates many forms of instantaneous conversation with unimaginable numbers of people over incomprehensible distances. It behooves you to make extensive and unrelenting use of it to alert and inform your fellow citizens of approaching catastrophe. And I do mean to use that word to describe it. The executive branch of the United States government has arrogated to itself a degree of power beyond anything ever imagined or exercised by King George. The legislative branch has become a parliament of corrupt and serviceable villains. The judicial branch is in peril of being overrun with jurists more interested in rewriting the Constitution than interpreting it. The once limited federal government is today a bureaucratic leviathan, and its abuse of power dwarfs by any measure in your day the overreaching arrogance of the British government and mine. If you are unable to stop the mad progress of your own federal government, the day will come when the freedoms you presently take for granted will not survive a new dark age of despotism. If you do not face the enormity of the task, then who shall face it? If the decisive blow is not struck now, then when, if ever, shall it be struck? I assure you, that if you have the fortitude of your convictions and the valor to act upon them while the opportunity to peacefully do so still exists, you may yet avert catastrophe. On the other hand, if fortitude and valor are absent from that field of political battle, then may God have mercy on you. Because an appeal to arms and to heaven will be the only recourse your generation will have against a leviathan far more powerful than any tyranny my generation ever faced. You are the posterity for whom we hazarded our all, at a great expense of treasure, tears, and blood, to bequeath the very liberty that is now in dire peril of perishing from the face of the earth. Your generation must decide whether or not you will preserve it for your posterity and ensure they will make a good use of it. If not, my generation shall repent in heaven that we endured half the pain to obtain it.